Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Small Screen Maniac. I'm Constance Miller. Today I'm talking about X-Men 97 episodes 4 and 5, so there's a lot of ground to cover, so let's get, let's get going. I'm going to be covering some spoilers, so if you haven't seen these episodes, do watch them. And if you haven't seen episode 5 yet, I think you're the only one on the planet who hasn't. So, um... Turn back now, unless you want to learn spoilers, go watch the episodes, come back, watch this video, and comment in the section below so we can discuss the epicness of at least episode 5. I'm going to gloss over episode 4, just because there wasn't really a whole lot going on until the second half. Uh, the first half deals with Jubilee and Sunspot getting sucked into Mojo World and being a part of a video game that Mojo has created. And Jubilee runs into an older version of herself. Her powers evolve. And a romantic development happens between Jubilee and Sunspot. So that was pretty cool. The second half deals with Storm and Forge hanging out. And Forge is working on a way to get Storm her powers back. And he's a technological guru with a mutant power to communicate with technology, so he's able to build practically anything that he can think of. And it turns out that he actually developed the collars that suppress mutant abilities, and as well as some other devices such as the gun that Executioner used to depower Magneto in which Storm stepped in the way and that's how she got her powers stripped. So Storm is obviously outraged. Forge confesses his love to her and she smacks him across the face. I thought that was brilliant. Loved it. So that's where everything leaves off with episode 4. Now we get into episode 5. Episode 5 is just beyond phenomenal and there's a lot to discuss and a lot of uh, things to really kind of look into deeply and it's complex, it's complicated, and oh so tragic. Whew. So I'm going to kind of try to take this character by character. And we're going to start off with a very neat cameo. And this cameo goes by the name of Trish Tilby. And she's a photojournalist. Well, not photo, video journalist. A news reporter. And she's interviewing the X-Men about the whole new acceptance of the mutant populace and how the island nation of Genosha uh, that is home to many, 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 many mutants has now joined the UN. This is also quite interesting because in the comics, Trish and Beast have a romance. So it was nice to see her included in this in a role that was obviously designed for her. Cyclops has a very interesting character arc in this episode, and he's obviously taken on the weight of trying to lead the X-Men, even if Magneto is in the mix. And that's a lot of weight on the shoulders for one person, and it certainly wears on him. And plus, he j just lost his son, technically. Uh, with Nathan being sent to the future to cure his techno-organic virus. So he's dealing with that and also the fact that 
Jean has been replaced by a clone at some point, which we don't know. My theory, as discussed in the last episode, is, or in, yeah, yeah, the last episode, is that she was switched out during Beyond Good and Evil. Um, but not knowing when that happened, who did he fall in love with? Did he fall in love with the actual Jean Grey? Or did he fall in love with Madeline Pryor? So he's conflicted on that level. And all this is really taking a toll on him. And he kind of snaps off. And deservedly so. Now we're moving on to Jean Grey and Madeline Pryor. So Jean is sorting out her own inner turmoil with trying to find out which memories are hers and which is Madeline Pryor's and also dealing with the distance that Cyclops has put between them because of all that and she's going through a dark patch and Wolverine kind of comes to her aid a little bit and you know says hey you're the only red I've ever known um, Red being her nickname from him. And he makes a nod to how old he is, which I thought was pretty interesting. And, and Jean kisses him. And Wolverine's like, no, no, it's Scott Summers, Jean Grey, that's it. There's no room for me in the mix. And so... Jean tries to console Cyclops, and Cyclops talks about how much he thinks about Nathan each and every day, every waking minute of the day, and there's a, a psychic intrusion, and Jean finds out that Scott and Madeline have been communicating psionically, um, psychically, and of course, that pisses Jean off because that was a thing between the two of them, or so she thought. So they get into this really nasty, toxic fight, um, verbal fight, and quips are thrown at each other that are just meant to hurt, and they do. I thought that was excellent writing. I thought it was handled very well, and the voice actors did a tremendous job adding the gravitas to that communication, even if it was ultimately toxic. So we find out that Madeline Pryor is on Genosha, and as certain X-Men arrive, which is Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit, they find out that she is also a member of the Council. Um, that kind of governs over Genosha. And I think Madeline's acceptance, especially with Rogue, is a little bit contrived. I'm not sure that it should be that smooth. It should be awkward still. Um, so that's where Madeline's at for the moment. So when the X-Men get there, uh, they're greeted by Nightcrawler. And I loved this segment or the segments with Nightcrawler because it really showed his playfulness, uh, still um, displaying his devout religion and a little bit of a coyness about him that was really interesting and cute. And we get a really good look at Genosha, and there's lots of little cameos here and there of various different X-Men characters throughout the years, and it, it's a peaceful nation. And so the council has decided that Magneto should be basically the ruler over Genosha, sort of like the president. And he said the only way that he's going to do that is if he can have a member of the X-Men 
govern with him. And on this council is Emma Frost, Sebastian Shaw, Banshee, Moira McTaggart, Val Cooper, no, not Val Cooper, um, Madeline Pryor, and I think that's it. Um, so, cameos galore there. Um, I'm interested to find out if Banshee is voiced by the same voice actor that did it in the original series. I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, I think it was Jeremy Ratchford. Because he also played Banshee in the live-action Generation X movie. Um, I'll look into that. So, Magneto basically is skeptical about doing such a thing. He reminisces about his first exchange with Charles Xavier. And the only way he's going to do it is if Rogue can be by his side. He was a member of the X-Men to govern with him. And he brings it up to Rogue, and she's, like, reluctant at first, and, and Magneto basically coerces her into saying yes. So that means Rogue has to have a conversation with Gambit. And that conversation basically consists of discussing her romantic relationship with Magneto in the past, well before she joined the X-Men, and how that she's able to touch him because of an electromagnetic field that he can place around him. And they had quite the romance. And eventually she saw how he was hurting saw the direction that he was heading in, decided she didn't want to be a part of that, and then eventually joined the X-Men. So she has a conversation with Gambit and basically says, this is what Magneto wants, this is what I'm going to do because I don't want to break your heart because there's no way that we can truly be together. And Gambit is reluctant at first to accept it and eventually he does and and basically says we're just going to be friends and I'm okay with that even though a tear streaks down his face and so that's that then there's this gala which I could assume could be the Hellfire Gala um, and it's grandiose. It's like, it's gorgeous. And the music is stunning. And everybody is there. Madeline Pryor, Gambit, Val Cooper, um, and a whole bunch of, well, Magneto, um, Sebastian Shaw, Emma Frost. Emma Frost makes a really, like, judgmental dig on Val Cooper which I thought was so in character and it was really nice even though Emma didn't get a lot to say in this episode that zinger was pretty good so um, everything is going swimmingly at this gala and and Rogue makes her entrance and she looks stunning Magneto comes to her side Gambit's watching, and they end up dancing together in this touching and feeling each other, and it's really hot. Um, and it kind of just really breaks Gambit's heart. It, it just does. And um, something happens with Madeline and Jean at the same time, that there's something on the psychic plane that just interrupts everything and they both get nosebleeds. And so Madeline ventures outside and then all of a sudden Cable shows up and he's running and saying, everybody, you know, g g get out, get out, get away, uh, cut the music, kill the party, um, he's coming. And he stops in front of Madeline, and all of a sudden she realizes that 
it's Nathan from the future. And all of a sudden, chaos erupts. It is devastating and horrifying. And there are bodies flying everywhere. There are, there's this huge sentinel with three heads that is just annihilating anything in its path. And other sentinels are being launched onto the island. And it's a fight for survival. And everybody is doing what they can to make sure everybody survives. So Magneto, Gambit, and Rogue work together to do what they can. And it's a difficult fight. It's hard. You see the challenges. You see how the odds are stacked against them. So while Magneto is attempting to save as many mutants as he can, especially the Morlocks, he's reminded of his past uh, in the concentration camps. And that just ignites a sense of fury within him. And he unleashes his powers in a remarkable way that was so cool to see how it was done. Meanwhile, Rogue and Gambit are trying to fight off as many Sentinels as they can, including the big, big one, which could be the new Master Mold. I don't know. Um, nothing was really said. Um, and you just continue to see all the chaos and destruction. So, um, it gets to the point where... Magneto is basically cornered, and he's protecting the Morlock leech right next to his side. Um, and it's clear that he is eventually going to lose this battle. And Rogue is witness to this, and she goes to help, but he holds her back. Her and Gambit. <laughs> and in the blink of an eye... Magneto is annihilated, and Rogue is witness to it, and it's furious. So she goes on an attack, and Gambit also does his own version of an amazing sequence where he's going to attack the big bad Sentinel. And he eventually is stabbed in the side, um, but he has one last salvo. Um, the name is Gambit, mon ami. Remember it, which is the line that he used in the original series. And he kinetically charges the whole robot, which causes it to explode, which obviously means that Gambit was right dead center in the blast. So everything, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of comes to a lull, and Rogue realizes that, you know, she's lost Magneto, and it cuts to the mansion where Trish Tilby is kind of covering live uh, the destruction that's happening on Genosha, or has happened on Genosha, and the X-Men are watching this and are all devastated, and Cyclops is like, how many? Damn it, how many? And... We cut back to Genosha where Rogue is holding Gambit's dead body and she's physically touching him with her skin and nothing is happening. She's not draining his powers. And she's crying and it cuts to black and you hear, I can't feel you. Ugh. Ugh. Share your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Also, I think um, in, in watching some of other bloggers talk about this episode and who the big bad could be, um, I have a theory. I have a theory that it could be Bastion. I'm interested to see if that is the case. Um, 
So yeah, that's what I think. So light up the comments. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified whenever Red and Slim Productions uploads a video. Don't forget to share with your friends. And also, if you're inclined to help the channel grow, you can do so by following the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Love and light to you all.